Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why betaine HCL could be so helpful for treating SIBO, and you could read between the lines and say why having low stomach acid sets you up for SIBO. First things first, let me elaborate on that last little bit for a quick second before we get to the picture that I've drawn behind me. So when I say that having low stomach acid will set you up for SIBO, I mean based on research. The scientific consensus seems to be that taking proton pump inhibitors, which lower stomach acid, these are drugs like Prilosec and Omeprazole, we know that these drugs tend to lead to dysbiosis and SIBO the longer that somebody is on them. Now, it's worth pausing here and saying, this does not mean that you're doomed to have SIBO if you've been on a PPI for a month or even six months, but certainly the longer you're on them, the higher the likelihood of dysbiosis or SIBO or both, and the higher the likelihood that you are malabsorbing nutrients like B vitamins and iron and calcium and magnesium. So these are a group of drugs that are prescribed very willy-nilly and very commonly here in the United States, but they have really big deal repercussions that people are only just now finding out about. So there have been a lot of research articles that cover this topic. I did a video here on this channel not all that long ago. I'll try to remember to link it, but I never seem to remember to do that on this channel. Um, but if you search for my channel and search for the word PPI, it should pop up somewhere on this channel. I have detailed that research in a great deal of depth at this point. And this is why increasing your stomach acid or increasing your digestive capacity with things like betaine HCL or apple cider vinegar or bitters can be really, really helpful in your SIBO journey and can help alleviate symptoms and maybe eradicate the overgrowth in and of itself if that is something that you are hoping to do. So without further ado, I'm gonna talk about two potential mechanisms that have been explored in research articles and why this is such a big deal. So behind me, I have drawn the upper part of your digestive system, right? The, the food comes in the mouth, goes down the esophagus, lands in the stomach, goes past the gallbladder and the pancreas, and goes down the tube into the small intestine, and eventually it'll reach your colon where the vast majority of your microbes live. But as is the case with SIBO, the idea with SIBO, bacterial overgrowth, is that you have an increased quantity or an improper ratio of good and bad guys living in the small intestine. So we can kind of think of like these green little dots as being the bacteria in question when we're talking about this person's SIBO. So as I said, the food comes in the mouth, down the esophagus, and it goes to the stomach. The first important mechanism of why this matters for the SIBO sufferer is that, oh my God, I don't, can you even see that? This is what happens when you let your almost nine-year-old play with all of your markers on your work whiteboard. My goodness gracious. Anyway, we're gonna see if it writes. So uh, we get a very faint yellow color. We're just gonna have to hope that's good enough to show up on the camera. So what I'm trying to scribble there in the yellow that no longer works is the stomach acid itself. And that is going to be a physical barrier. It's gonna be a, a wall protecting the inside of you from the outside of you. So as you are eating food and drink and like touching your fingers to your lips and putting your lips on a glass and on a fork, all of which have bacteria and viruses and God knows what on their surfaces, which is normal and not to be scared of, but as you introduce more bacteria and more microbes into your body via the mouth, you have this wall of stomach acid that destroys them, right? The stomach acid is going to neutralize and kill a great deal of those pathogens if it is strong enough to do so. So that is mechanism number one. The other thing that's really important, and I tell this to all my students in FODMAP Freedom, is that stomach acid is really important for digestion in and of itself. It's important for sterilizing and getting rid of microbes. But really, I think the most important role of stomach acid is not in the stomach itself. It's when you squirt that acidic bolus of food into the upper part of the small intestine, there are receptors and there are mechanisms in place where the body registers, whoa, that's like battery acid. And I don't have the protection in place here in the small intestine to cope with that level of acidity, right? The stomach has a mucus layer and it has tissue that is built to withstand acid. The small intestine does not have that luxury. So these neurological reflexes and these chemical reflexes work to protect the small intestine, which means 
when the acidity is sensed in the upper part of the small intestine, reflexively what your body's gonna do is you're gonna dump bile and bicarbonate from the gallbladder and enzymes and bicarbonate from the pancreas and that's going to mix with the acidic bolus of food that just came out of the stomach to produce chyme and now that pH is correct and not caustic and not damaging to the small bowel and now all of those enzymes and the bile and the acid everything can work together as that food traverses the small bowel but what's really important bile has antimicrobial properties so in the process of neutralizing that stomach acid and correcting that, that pH so that the ecosystem in that area is happy, we're getting an antimicrobial substance that piggybacks off of that bicarbonate secretion. Now, I don't know if enzymes have an antimicrobial bend to them. I just have not researched that yet, but it wouldn't surprise me if there is a little bit of an antimicrobial property to whatever is secreted by the pancreas too. So when you support stomach acid, you're not only supporting the digestion of things like protein, B vitamins, and minerals, as I mentioned earlier, but you're also supporting the digestion of your carbs and your fat and secreting antimicrobial compounds like bile into the small intestine and all of those things put together, right? The physical barrier here in the stomach to kill off the microbes when they enter the bicarbonate, the bile, the enzymes, and all of their antimicrobial properties working together, and the additional, like the third bonus item that I didn't even plan in this video, the fact that you're digesting your nutrients better and that you have proper building blocks to keep your body happy and healthy, those three things all put together mean that you're gonna have better coping mechanisms and you're gonna be able to clear excess bacteria or clear dysbiosis out of the small bowel should that be a problem for you. And yes, before you even ask, yes, betaine HCL is perfectly safe and perfectly fine and effective for people who have methane dominant problems like emo or what used to be called methane dominant SIBO. And I have a whole video on this channel talking about why that theory is a bunch of hogwash and why more people with emo should be embracing something like betaine HCL. So all that being said, I really hope that I made the case for supporting your stomach acid. Now, whether you do this with lifestyle changes or a supplement like betaine HCL or apple cider vinegar or bitters, that's up to you. But I have seen this tremendously, tremendously and profoundly help people with symptoms ranging from bloating, indigestion, post-meal fullness and heaviness, that feeling like there's a brick of lead in the stomach and the food just isn't moving, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and constipation. I have seen this help so many people. I really hope that you check it out and at least try supporting your stomach acid. Now, I have some other videos on this channel about how you could speed date with betaine HCL to determine your correct dose. And I also have videos on this channel dedicated to talking about natural ways to increase your own production of HCL. And that way you don't have to be reliant on a supplement like betaine forever and ever for the rest of your days. So whatever route you choose to do or a combination of several, I hope that I've made the case for supporting your stomach acid in the name of eradicating SIBO. Of course, it's possible that you made it to this point in the video and you're still trying to figure out how big of a deal is this for me as an individual, right? Because that's what you want at the end of the day. It's one thing for me, a YouTuber, an educator, to tell you that I think most people with SIBO should at least try betaine HCL because I've seen some really great results doing that. But it's another thing to assess, do you as an individual need to think about this or care about this or work on this? And how does that stack up in the list of priorities when a million other strangers on the internet are telling you to prioritize something else? This lady on the Facebook thread told me to prioritize Candida. This other Facebook person told me to prioritize leaky gut. This person on the Reddit thread said that I should prioritize the Klebsiella that was on my stool test. This person, my cousin's great aunt Mildred's sister, told me to prioritize protein. You get the idea. We're bombarded with a million different opinions and a million different options, and they're all kind of weighted the same because it's coming from a stranger who doesn't know you. So 
This is the point in the video where I say, again, I can make a blanket statement as an educator here on YouTube, and I can tell you that a lot of my students get great results and help symptomatically from trying betaine HCL. But I would need to get to know you and your case and your symptoms and your history in order to make an informed decision. So if you want that, that personal touch, if you want my eyes and a nutritionist's eyes and peer support on your case to help you figure out what matters and what doesn't matter to you and help you come up with a list of priorities in order that you can start to tackle, that's where something like FODMAP Freedom would be a really valuable asset to you. That way it's not just you alone here on YouTube or alone on a Reddit thread trying to figure out what matters most. Let me and my staff and your peer support help you decide what matters the most for you and what you could probably leave by the wayside. There are a lot of people who go through FODMAP Freedom thinking that they have the list of priorities in order, but then once they go through the program, they realize that either their list of priorities needs to be shuffled quite a bit, or they're able to just abandon one or more of those priorities altogether and whittle down what they really need to work on. And that's what it's about. If FODMAP Freedom was just about lecture content and providing a protocol that worked for everybody, I would just slap it up here on YouTube and be done with the thing. But it's the coaching and the peer support and the email support, the live Q&As, and the built-in quizzes and assessments that I have in FODMAP Freedom that help you customize the journey for you as an individual, as opposed to the other people who are going through the program. So if any of this resonated with you, or if you want help figuring this out, we'll be enrolling again come January 2025. If you want more information and you want to be the first to know so you can get a special early sign up bonus, make sure that you've joined the waitlist. I'll put it in the description down below, but basically if you go to fodmapfreedom.com slash enroll, it'll lead you to the waitlist when we're in the off season, not enrolling. Put your name on that and all it means is I'm going to email you maybe once a week just to make sure you have the link to my latest YouTube video or podcast episode. And then you'll be the first to know via email when the doors open in January 2025 for FODMAP Freedom. So come on over. We have garlic. We have cookies. It's a fun time. We really have fun on these Q&As. And more importantly, we get results and we help people defeat things that they never thought they could defeat, like SIBO, dysbiosis, and candida. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.